I'm Owen Bigline. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, I'm going to touch on a, a bunch of topics here that have been in the media lately. Wanted to get out, out to this last month. I've been busy, been traveling a little bit, but uh, let's hit it here in time for one of my rants to try and set the record straight on some of these topics. First things first, a couple of weeks ago, the NDP government announced that they are uh, canceling that election promise they made about a $400 annual renter's rebate that they were gonna give to all renters in the province. Now, this was, when they announced this during the election, this was one of the most insidiously stupid ideas I had ever heard. Giving everyone a $400 uh, rent rebate I don't, what that's going to do for the guy who's renting a $2,500 one bedroom downtown or a $1,500 old wood frame out in, in Richmond, I have no idea. I think they finally realize that it's going to cost ten dollars or $15,000 just to administer this harebrained idea and decided to cancel it. So some people were upset about that uh, and another election, NDP election promise that they're not coming through on. The bigger one though was, of course, every year at this time uh, for the last De couple of decades, the province, who the, the government that's in power at the time, will announce what landlords are able to raise uh, their rent for for the following year, for 2019. And this year, uh, they announced its CPI, which it's always been, which is the Consumer Price Index inflation rate, plus 2%. So it was 4.5%. Uh, now, of course, in this market, with all the stuff that's in the news about affordability, and we've got an NDP government in power, the people's government, uh, that took on a life of its own. Four and a half percent, this is crazy. These landlords are raping us renters and we've got to stop this. <laughs> Even though for the last several decades, we've never heard anything about this. Uh, last year it was at three and a half. The reason it's at four and a half this year is because inflation is up. We've been living in a low inf inflation environment for the last six or seven years. Inflation has been going up steadily here, so now we're bumping it from three and a half to four and a half. What's the big deal? Of course, the housing minister, Carol James Horgan, took a look at it and said, hey, no, we gotta do something about this. Um, and sure enough, two weeks later, they announced, which they always do, it's they always start with the same thing. We listen to the people of British Columbia and uh, the four and a half percent is too much. Well, listen, if you believe that, listening to the people of British Columbia, if they listened to the people of British Columbia, we would have had Uber by now. But they rolled it back. Instead of CPI plus 2%, it's only gonna be CPI. So it's gonna be, instead of four and a half, it's gonna be two and a half percent. Now, for me, this is a non-event. I've blogged about it before. If you've read my book or watched some of my earlier blogs on being a landlord and managing rental properties, I don't raise the rent on my tenants. That's how I've set up my business. There's no right or wrong. I've got lots of, of clients, lots of investor clients that do raise the rent every year. I don't because I'm busy. I like to retain good tenants. So I screen my tenants. I pick the best of the best. Once they're in there, if they're not bothering me, I don't raise the rent because it's the tenancy turnover that's time consuming. And for me, time is money and I'd rather keep those good tenants in there so I don't raise the rent. And I've had tenants that have stayed three, four, five years without a rent increase. When they finally do move out, which they eventually always do, I will raise the rent up, generally, sometimes substantially, to get it back up to market rent. Now, this plan is probably going to backfire eventually here, as I'll tell you here in a minute, because for every action, there's a reaction. Now, if you know downtown Vancouver and areas like the West End, we have not built any uh, purposely built rental buildings for decades here in this city, up until about three years ago, where the government was uh, giving the developers like Boza, like Ani, uh, like Aquilini, incentives to build some rental buildings, some rental stock. Because prior to that, they weren't interested in that. Why would they be? There was no money in it. It takes too long to collect your money on a rental building. It's a 20, 30 year plan. Instead, they'd rather just build a condo, stratify it, pre-sale it, sell it off, make their money and move on to the next one. So they have been building rental stock here over the last three years. Aquilini just built two over at uh, the Georgia Viaduct. Uh, there's a new one that Boza put in here over on Davy. There's two more in Gastown. But I can tell you that with this new announcement where they can only raise the rent by 2% inst uh, instead of, uh, sorry, 2.5 instead of 4.5, 
that is probably going to put a, uh, the kibosh on any future rental-only buildings. Uh, and the only reason they did it, the developers, was because the city and the province were granting them a lot of incentives. More density on their other projects, more f uh, floor space ratio, uh, better, quicker zoning in, to entice them to build these rental-only buildings. So there's always a reaction to every action. And I think you will see this not now, but down the road, I can't see why too many developers would want to take on rental buildings now when it's capped at 2%. That'll change though when the NDP government uh, gets voted out eventually, all governments change, maybe they'll put it back to what it's always been, uh, CPI plus 2%. Other topic here. Uh, in the news I was watching the Globe and Mail, uh, sorry, the uh, Global News about a month ago and we've all heard about these, uh, you know, <laughs> articles and things in the news about rent evictions uh, and uh, redevelopment and unit assemblies and land assemblies and everything else. So they profiled a about a 70 year old old wood frame building in Mount Pleasant, uh, about 35 units, probably falling apart, that uh, the tenants now have been given notice the owner of the building has sold it to a developer and they're quite generous with the notice. I think they've given them 12 months notice that they've got to vacate and I believe they're all getting somewhere between twelve and fifteen thousand dollar lump sum as a relocation fee. Pretty generous, in my opinion. But of course, these tenants, many of them have been long-term tenants, and I do have some empathy for some of them. They've got to move. They've been there for a long time. Many of them are paying way, way below market rent. They've really had a gravy train. But they interview a guy and a couple of these long-term tenants, they have a pinata set up and they're hitting it with a hockey stick and that's the, the dirty owner of the building who's selling this building out from under us and now I've got to move. Uh, I've been there 12 years and uh, the gravy train has ended here. And the bad guy, the landlord, you know, the, the, you know it just reeks of, of entitlement uh, by some of these people that they feel that they should be somehow grandfathered in and they never have to leave and they're paying half of what market rent is, which isn't the way life works. So it, the article with the story went on a little, they interview a guy who's been in this building for 13 years, pays $850 a month, and in the last 13 years has had a total of $250 in rent increases. And he's all up in arms that he's got to leave. Um, and you know, it's, it's crazy, really. I mean, I do feel somewhat for these guys, but remember, I've talked about it before. When you become a lifetime or a long-term renter in a city like Vancouver, this is what you're signing up for. This is something that the guy who wrote that book that I panned uh, several times about renting versus owning doesn't talk a lot about. You live like a gypsy. You know, you, you rent a place, a year later, the owner tells you that he's either going to sell the property or his niece or his, his daughter's going to move in and you've got to get out or he's going to renovate the unit or you're living in, a, in an old dilapidated building in the east side that the owner is now going to sell to a developer and you've got six or 12 months to get out. This is what you sign up for when you're a renter. Now, let's look at the other, put the shoe on the other foot here. I don't know a lot about the owner of this building, but I can got a pretty good idea of what the story is here because I know some of these owners in places like Mount Pleasant, New Westminster, and Richmond that own these older apartment buildings. This is probably a guy who bought this building 30 or 40 years ago, hardworking guy, probably scrimped and saved to get the down payment, probably went in with some family members or another partner or two. They probably told him he was crazy 35 years ago to be paying what he was for that building. Are you nuts? This guy has not been living high on the hog. He's not been taking vacations to Hawaii every year. He's not driving a Ferrari, I'll tell you right now. He's probably living in an old two bedroom in the building, probably works 15 hours a day. It never ends. He's managing 32 units. Something is always breaking, the toilets, the sinks, the faucets. It's an old building. Probably works 15 hour days. And now he's probably 75 years old. He's got kids, he's got grandkids. The wife is telling him, you're getting too old. The developer comes in and offers him eight or $9 million. This is the payday. This is where all the work is gonna pay off and I'm gonna sell the building. <laughs> the building is falling apart for God's sakes. It's underutilized and you need to be building more density on this. But somehow these tenants 
feel that this old guy that has worked his ass off for the last 35 or 40 years isn't entitled to this payday at the end. Crazy. Now, if you've read my book and you've watched some of my blogs from years ago, you'll know this is a similar story, the catalyst for me writing my book. It was a Globe and Mail article very similar to this about a guy who bought a duplex in Kitsilano in the 1981 or 82, paid $235,000 for this thing. At the time, his friends and family and people were probably telling him he's crazy buying an old duplex on a small lot in Kitsilano. Interest rates were probably at 16 or 17%. But the guy bought it, scrimped and saved, rented the other half out, lived in the other one, fixed it up over the years, kept it maintained, and then three years ago sold it for $3.2 million. And the author of this Globe and Mail article thought this guy was not entitled to these gains. Somehow he had cheated the system and no way should real estate go up like that after 30 years. I blogged about this before as well. The people that write these articles are obviously very naive to how the world works and how investing works. You know, listen, Vancouver real estate, I've been in it for over 30 years and it's done very well for me as it has for a lot of my clients. But you know, when you compare Vancouver real estate to some of the S&P 500 and some of the NASDAQ companies that I own in my stock portfolio, it makes Vancouver real estate look you know, not all that great, even though it has been good, it's slow and steady. I mean, if you bought Apple 10 or 12 or 13 years ago, you're up six or 700%. If you bought Amazon, you're up 1500% or Netflix or Visa. Even my old slow growth stalwarts like Pepsi, with all the spin-offs and dividends and stock splits I've had on that stock, I've owned it for over 25 years. I'm probably up six or 700% all day on that stock. So, but somehow when someone buys a, a condo or a house 20 years ago and it doubles or goes up two and a half times, hey, that's, you're not entitled to those gains. That's just crazy. So, you know, this is what you sign up for when you, when you, are, a la when you are a tenant. Rent increases, uncertainty, rent evictions, developments. You know, this is what you get and why if you're gonna live in a city like Vancouver, you know, for anything more than eight or nine years, you should try and become an owner and not a lifetime renter. It's the only way to go. I'm Owen Big Leg. As always, I'll see you next week.